Despite an ugly day of trading, our next guest is sticking with her S&P 500 target of 50-50 for 2022. Joining us now is Lori Calvacina, head of U.S. equity strategy at RBC Capital Markets. So, so Lori, does that mean that you would be buying on days like today, weakness, if you're still looking at modest gains for the year? Hey, thanks for having me here today, Sarah. Look, I think it depends on your time horizon. In the short term, I think it's tough to make the argument that the pain in the market is done. I think tech is a bellwether for what's going on broadly, and tech shares, unfortunately, just don't look cheap yet. And when rates are rising, you want to own cheaper stocks, not expensive stocks. So we've really got to see that tech valuation frost come in a bit more. Now, I do think we will get to a buying opportunity. I think we're going to end up with a decent year, a 6% type return. That is nothing heroic. But if you're trying to peg that absolute bottom, we're probably not there quite yet. What about uh, the areas that have pulled back the most already, uh, Laurie? The Russell's down uh, the most today. It's down 6.3% year to date. Uh, do you think the smaller cap uh, end of the spectrum is looking attractive yet? So, look, I think the problem, Wilf, with small caps is that they've looked cheap for quite some time, and they should have really been doing well to start the year when the financials were doing well, when the energy stocks were doing well, and valuation was simply not enough to get people back in the small cap space. I think one of the problems that we have is that the timing of Fed liftoff has been pulled forward pretty dramatically. So your opportunity to really invest in the cyclical parts of the market, that's also been compressed. And frankly, large caps simply have higher quality. Small cap have valuation appeal, but they also have lower quality. And this is a time when you really do longer term want to be shifting back into higher quality. So I think it's just not a good mix of sort of the lower quality and the cheap valuations. I think people are not quite willing to go that far out on days when they're willing to invest in cyclicals right now. So, so we are facing higher interest rates and a more aggressive Fed timeline, Lori. How, how does the market rally in, in a year like that when... You, you say we, we're used to seeing multiple contraction, especially after years of what we've seen in the markets. How, how do you think it turns the tide if we're going to look at four rate hikes this year? Look, if you go back and look at what happens to stocks when the Fed is raising rates, typically stocks do actually manage to rally through that. We do see an impact on multiples. How bad the compression is, how long it lasts, depends on what multiple you're looking at. But what I would leave you with is this, Sarah. This is a little bit of a different environment today because of the heavy weight of technology and secular growth. Once we get that valuation froth out of the market, I think you'll see the pressure on tech shares and the pressure on the market really ease up. Remember, coming into this, the end of last year, secular growth was over 51 one percent of the market cap of the S&P. That's very different from what it's been historically. But once we work through that, I think you'll see that tech will be able to stabilize and actually help bolster the market. And just remember this about secular growth, Sarah, that secular growth tends to really not do well heading into the first Fed rate hike. But after we get liftoff, we do, do normally see the cyclical trades, the value part of the market stops leading and secular growth takes back over. I think that's in part because markets sniff out a slowdown in economic growth that is actually friendly to the secular growth trade. And 2023 GDP expectations are all ready for growth to go back to average type levels. So I think this is a very complicated year, but I do think ultimately tech will start really benefiting from the secular nature again once that valuation froth is out. On a, on a day like this, Laurie, I've got to ask you about your overweight call on, on financials. I mean, rates are higher. We're, we've got earnings beats for the most part. Uh, wh why are they performing so badly? They just run up too, too aggressively in the first few weeks of the year? It feels like that happens a lot heading into reporting season. Remember, we've had a lot of financials come in today, and financials do tend to be the early, you know, sort of leaders. They tend to come out first when reporting season really gets underway, and they have the spotlight all to themselves, which unfortunately is not always a good thing when they do have such a significant run-up. And I'll tell you one thing we noticed, you know, just coming into this reporting season, we actually noticed it about a week ago. Um, financials don't actually look cheap anymore. They don't look expensive relative to the S&P, but we actually noticed on our model, the relative P.E. multiple had gone back to the long-term average about a week ago. So we think that the bar is a little bit higher for the financials going forward. 